This question deals with a 43-year-old male who is diagnosed with hepatic cirrhosis due to prolonged heavy alcohol consumption. He develops massive ascites and lower extremity edema that responds well to furosemide therapy. So he has cirrhosis and he is on furosemide. However, a week later, the patient receives high dose of ibuprofen for joint pains and soon develops worsening abdominal distension. Blunting of the diuretic response in this patient is due to interruption of which of the following substances. So what is the action of furosemide? Furosemide is a loop diuretic and it is going to inhibit a co-transporter with one sodium, one potassium, and two chloride. This is the primary action of loop diuretics. But there is something else. Loop diuretics also inhibits, uh, sorry, loop diuretics also produces prostaglandins. PGE2. Now prostaglandins, what is the function of prostaglandins? Prostaglandin is going to cause vasodilation. It's also going to cause bronchodilation. And it's going to cause increased uterine contraction. So going back to the question, this patient was initially on furosemide and which was decreasing, which was lowering, lowering his ascites and lower extremity edema. And then because of his joint pains, he was given ibuprofen. And then there was decrease or his abdominal distension became worse. So what was the relationship between uh, using ibuprofen and using, excuse me, uh, between using ibuprofen and using furosemide? The relationship is ibuprofen is going to block uh, COX-1 and COX-2. As a result, it's going to block synthesis of prostaglandin. If it blocks synthesis of prostaglandin, there is going to be less vasodilation. In fact, it might even cause vasoconstriction. There is going to be, because of the less vasodilation, less of the fluid is going to be excreted through the renal system. As a result, the abdominal distension will be worse. So, answering the question, blunting of the diuretic response in this patient is due to interruption of which of the following substances? It is going to be prostaglandins. So, since we're talking about prostaglandins, let's talk about a little bit more on the same uh, topic, prostaglandins, prostacycline, and thromboxane. You can read up more on this from page, from page 429 where they talk about the prostaglandin, prostacycline, and thromboxane. So I'm going to draw three lines here, and I'm going to talk about each one of them separately. So let's talk about prostaglandin, or PGE2 first. Prostaglandin. Pro Again, I'm just going to repeat myself. Prostaglandin is going to cause vasodilation. It's going to cause bronco dilation and it's going to cause increased in uterine tone. What about thromboxane? Thromboxane is going to do a little bit opposite of this. It's going to cause a vasoconstriction, bronchoconstriction, and platelet aggregation. And last of all we have PGI2 which is going to be our prostacycline. Now Prostacycline is going to cause vasodilation, just like prostaglandin, bronchodilation, just like prostaglandin, decrease in uterine tone, opposite of prostaglandin, and increase in platelet aggregation, just like thromboxane. Anyways, that was a little off topic going on to this question. Uh, the, the prostaglandin is going to be produced by furosemide, which is going to be inhibited by our ibuprofen. So the blunting of the diuretic response, the, the, the substance which is responsible for blunting of the diuretic response is going to be prostaglandin or answer A.